Have you ever wondered what happens to your body as you fast during Ramadan? Well, we all know that scientists all around the world always speak about how important intermittent fasting is for your body. But we as Muslims do this once a year. So I decided to make this video about all the benefits that we will achieve during the fast of Ramadan, inshallah. So let's go ahead and delve right into this. <laughs> So the first week that we start fasting is also known as the cleansing and transition phase. This is a phase in which our bodies start relying on a completely different energy source. So we're used to eating and getting all of our energy from the carbs and whatnot, but initially the body uses glucose stored in the liver and muscles. Once these stores are depleted, it transitions to using the fat as the primary energy source, which leads to fat breakdown and weight loss. This is a really good time in the month for people who are looking to lose some weight because the body will actually start breaking down your fat and using that for energy. The next thing is the detoxification. The process of fasting accelerates the body's natural detoxification process. The liver, kidneys, and skin work together to eliminate toxins, which can improve your overall health and vitality. The digestive system also takes a break and this is a very good moment for your body because fasting provides a very much needed rest to the digestive system and this reduces inflammation in the gut and improves conditions such as the irritable bowel syndrome which is also known as the IBS. So this is the week where your body also focuses on hydration and electrolyte balance. So focusing on hydration during non-fasting hours is very crucial. Proper intake of water and electrolytes supports cellular function and aids in detoxification. So a lot of us, including me, used to always think that drinking the most amount of water during the suhoor time is the best way to stay hydrated throughout the day. But as I got older and did more research, I learned that the best way to stay hydrated is actually making sure that you have the electrolytes as well as your water. Some of these electrolytes include salt and potassium, which you can get from a banana as well. So in my water, I actually always like to use liquid IV to drink, but if I don't have that, just search up your local minerals that are found in every day-to-day -day products and just sprinkle some of that into your water and I promise you it'll make the biggest difference. So now let's move on to the second week and what happens to our bodies during the second week of Ramadan. This week, our bodies will focus on metabolic enhancement and hormonal balance. This is the time where insulin sensitivity and glycemic controls are actually taking place in our bodies. So continuous fasting significantly improves insulin sensitivity and this helps in better blood sugar control and reducing type 2 diabetes. So for anyone who's suffering with diabetes, fasting is a great way to help the body combat that. Another improvement that happens to our body is the body's metabolic rate changes. The body adapts to energy restriction by becoming more effective and efficient at utilizing fat stores. And this sometimes leads to a temporary increase in metabolic rate due to the thermogenic effect of increased fat oxidation. Fasting also boosts levels of adiponectin, which is a hormone that enhances fat burning and glucose regulation. This hormone also reduces levels of leptin and this leads to a more effective appetite regulation. So, so far Ramadan is very good for someone who's looking to lose weight and just have a more effective and healthy body. Now let's move on to week number three and this really focuses on the cognitive, emotional and physical adaptations of our body. Fasting increases the production of brain derived neurotrophic factors which is also known as the BDNF and it fosters neural health and protection against neurodegenerative diseases. So fasting not only helps our gut but it also helps our neurons which is found in our brains. It also helps our emotional well-being and fasting mental health. Fasting can lead to improved mood and well-being reducing symptoms of anxiety and depression. The practice encourages mindfulness and present moment awareness. Now let's move on to talk about the physical strength and endurance during Ramadan. Contrary to concerns about loss of strength, Many individuals report maintained or even enhanced physical performance as the body becomes more adept at utilizing fat for energy. So a lot of the people who go to the gym might think that if I fast, I'm going to lose all my strength or all my progress that I've been doing in the gym for the past year, I'll lose it during Ramadan. But contrary to the popular belief, that's actually not the case. And I can attest to this myself. During the month of Ramadan, I used to strength train. And during the end of the month, I was actually to hit an all-time PR, which I never thought would have been possible. But the strength that is found during Ramadan is incomparable. And I highly recommend you to just try to shift your mindset on fasting and actually how try to think about how much benefit fasting can do for your body. Now, let's move on to week number four, which is spiritual renewal and self-reflection. 
Fasting during Ramadan is a deeply spiritual experience, fostering a sense of closeness to the divine, increased devotion, and spiritual reflection. The act of fasting is seen as a form of worship and self-purification. The Prophet ﷺ says about the month of Ramadan that it is a month, the gates of heaven are open and the gates of hell are closed. And it is also a time when the devils are chained up and Ramadan has one night that is worth a thousand nights. Imagine if you make one rak'ah in the month of Ramadan in the, the special night, it is as if you've made 1000 rak'ahs that night. So try your best to make the most of Ramadan and also think about this hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ says, the best of deeds are the ones that are consistent, even if they are small. And this hadith is found in Bukhari. So I highly recommend finding one thing or one deed that you can for sure be consistent of, not only during the month of Ramadan, but something you can carry on for the next year, inshallah. One thing that Ramadan really helps build, especially that is something you'll notice during the fourth week, is self-discipline and self-control. Fasting develops self-discipline and it helps individuals gain control over their desires and impulses, which can extend to other areas of life, promoting patience, perseverance, and resilience. You know, once you take all these habits that you learned from Ramadan and apply it to your daily routine, you're going to find so much discipline in things that you haven't been able to be disciplined in for the past whatever a couple of years or months that you've been experiencing it with. Another thing that Ramadan does for us and something that we'll be noticing by the end of Ramadan is that experiencing hunger and thirst deepens empathy for those in need and it encourages charitable acts and a greater willingness to help others. So if you guys are looking to donate any funds for the people of Gaza, go ahead and check the link in my description. I've teamed up with HCI, which is a fundraiser in which we will be raising funds for those affected by what's going on in Gaza. Now let's talk about the long-term benefits and considerations of the fasting of Ramadan. The discipline of Ramadan can lead to lasting changes in lifestyle and dietary habits, which encourages a balanced approach to eating and an appreciation for food. Extended fasting periods activate autophagy, a critical process for cellular cleaning and renewal, which potentially reduces the risk of chronic diseases and extending the lifespan. Research suggests that fasting can regenerate immune cells and offers a reset that boosts the immune system's effectiveness. Beyond Ramadan, the spiritual insights and personal growth attained during the month can inspire continued spiritual practices which deepens our faith and helps us become more God conscious because at the end of the day the most important benefit of Ramadan is that Ramadan is known as the month of the Quran it is the month where the Quran was revealed and it's very very important to use this month to kind of build your relationship with the Quran and you know sometimes we may not be reading Quran as much as we're supposed to but during the time of Ramadan it's very important to make a certain time and a certain portion of the Quran where we read it and stay consistent and then hopefully this habit that we gain in the month of Ramadan can translate to the upcoming years and I hope you guys enjoyed this video on some of the benefits from the month of Ramadan may Allah allow us each to reach the end of this month and allow us to achieve the highest levels of Jannah and allow us to have the highest levels of this earth as well may Allah bless you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time inshallah assalamu alaikum